It's cold, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not gonna get much done this weekend. I've got a pulled muscle in my lower back, and it is absolutely killing me. I can't lean over anything. Last weekend, all the welding and all the cutting and everything that I did last weekend really took its toll on me. So I've got my wife out here. She's helping me pick up some stuff and move stuff around. But right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out what the full stroke will be. That means all the way, what are you laughing? She'd be stroking. <laughs> all the way to the ground and then how far it's gonna go with a bag in it. So that's all I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get these screws or these bolts in here on this. I haven't, I haven't made the gussets yet. I will make the gussets. But right now this is what I'm trying to do so that I can get all this on here. No, I don't have my tripod on this thing. I'm just holding it. So it's making everything harder to get to or to do with one hand. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find that bottom one. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna pause it and do this with two hands. All right, we're gonna bring this down about as far as this bag will stretch out. We don't wanna go too far. We don't wanna risk ripping the bag or damaging anything. So we're just gonna let this down slowly but surely. I can't see, so you're go ahead. That way we can see how much movement we're gonna get. Yeah, we can still go a little further. Okay. That's good. That's about, that's close to full. Because it's starting to pull in on the sides a little bit. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, if there was air in it, it would push it a little bit further. But we're not going to put air in it. And now... We need a measure. All right, what we're about to do here is we're gonna measure to see how much clearance we have from the bottom of the frame down to the ground. And a lot of guys have been saying, how do you measure that when you wanna make your C-notch? Okay, you have your frame like this and you wanna build a C-notch up and over and your axle is here, okay? You want to know how far up you need to make the bottom of that C notch so that you don't, so that you have enough clearance. Okay. And the way we're going to do this is your frame has all different kinds of stuff going on and movements and whatnot. Some of them, not all of them have different movements like that. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set it on the ground. Now, preferably, you're going to want to buy the rims that you're going to build your truck with. Okay? If you can buy that or get tires that are the same diameter as your end result is going to be. Okay? So, if you're going to get a 20-inch rim with a little thin tire around it, you can actually do like a 14-inch rim with a fatter tire on it and they're gonna be the same height. That's that's what you're gonna to wanna to do, okay? So try to get a tire that's gonna best match your end result. Now, set it on the ground. That's the first thing you're gonna do. You're gonna set it on the ground under its own weight, no jacks, no nothing, just sitting on the ground. Then, let's say this is the ground. We're gonna measure from here, from the lowest point on your frame that you can find lowest point to the ground okay let's say that is 16 inches so it's 16 inches from there to the ground what's going to happen is is now you know you need to travel 16 inches to get all of this to lay down on the ground at its lowest point now over here let's say you have your axle right here you know of course your wheels are like that so you've got your axle right here. Your axle is actually closer to your frame than the frame is to the ground. So take that 16 inches and from the top of your axle, 
Okay, let's say this is your axle, not from the center, not from the bottom, but from the very tip top. You're gonna run your measuring tape down to the top of your axle, and you're gonna go up 16 inches, and you're gonna make you an imaginary line that's 16 inches above, okay? So 16 inches from the top, straight up. This is the bottom of your C-notch for your axle to reach there. If you're gonna put your bags on your axle, then you need to account for that. Normally, you're, you're using two by fours for your C-notch. So if you're using two by fours, you can put a flat plate on the top of your C-notch and you'll have four inches, which is enough for your bag to still fit up in there. But that is gonna be how you do that. You're gonna measure from the top of the axle up to the top and 16 inches and that will be the bottom of your c-notch not the top but the bottom of your c-notch that way you have enough room to reach the bottom and your frame to reach the ground a lot of guys like doing it a little bit extra so that there's enough space for whatever else may come up because if you put let's say you're gonna do uh you're gonna do a four link and your four link comes in here and and up to here well, now you're going to have stuff on top of your axle and below your axle. If you have stuff on top and bottom, you're going to need gap before you put in a cross member. Because if you put a cross member right there at the front, say this is the cab right here, right? If you put a cross member at the front, when your link bars come up, they're going to hit that cross member and you're not going to lay out. You just defeated everything that you were measuring for. So think about where your link bars are going to go. Think about where your bag mounts are going to go and a and add those measurements in to make sure that you have enough room when you lay out for all that stuff to be in there as well. But that's how you're gonna measure. You're gonna measure from the lowest point down and from the top of your axle up. Those two measurements will be the same and that's where the bottom of your C-notch is gonna go. Hope this helps you guys out. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled program where we watch my wife make these measurements so we know how far we're going to be sitting off the ground when the bag inflates. That's basically what we're going to try to do. See, now this is all the way down as far as we can let it drop, pretty much. So now what she's going to do is she's going to take that lowest part of that frame, and she's going to measure from there to the ground. It's actually 16 inches. 16 inches. All right. Now, what I want you to do is I want to measure from the underside of this tire to the ground. She's being a champ helping me out with this. This would be so, it's really hard for my back to even move around. You got to find the, the closest spot to the ground. I actually like lay down and look at it. You can get a better idea. About six inches. Hang on. You're not at the lowest point. The lowest point to the ground. You see where that, the curve of the tire goes down? Um, more like five and a half inches. So five and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 16 inches and we're going to subtract the five inches. You said, well, let's just subtract five and then we'll do another half. So 16, so that'd be 11 inches ten minus, and a half. huh? No, 10 and a half. Huh? Oh, you did say ten and a half? I'm sorry. My bad. So yeah, this will have ten and a half inches of lift off the ground with the way the bags are set up now. Where before it was like way, way up in the air. Ten and a half inches is more than enough. Most cars don't even ride that high off the ground going down the interstate. You get six inches of clearance un un underneath it, and that's that's a pretty good amount. So I like the way that is. Now, my idea for now, here's, here's the other problem with the pan hard bar is, and, and a two link. The axle is going to move like this, which means from top to bottom, it's going to shift in, uh, in the direction that it's facing, which means a bar that goes from here over is actually going to end up having to twist a little bit with it. So the, le 
the lesser movement you have with a two link, the better because it's not going to twist that bar as much. Too much lift and you're going to twist that bar so hard it's going to break off, it's going to bend pieces and all that. So 11 inches, we can kind of work with that. You're looking at less than, you're looking at what, five and a quarter inches. We said it was ten and a half off the ground. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at five and a quarter inches movement, which that's not going to twist as much. You go further than that, uh, I mean, it's going to have twists, but the further you go, the worse that twist is going to be. So my idea right now is to actually make a mount right here at the furthest point out. And then we were looking at this. There is this much space between there. We can fit a one inch bar straight through here. So if I put the, the uh, bushing mount or the link end right here, we can put the link in basically here facing that way. Get it out far enough to clear so that the one inch bar goes right behind that. So we'll have to make mounts that'll hold this out here like that. And then the one inch bar will go straight out and across that way over to here. And then on this frame mount right here, we'll make a, a drop down that actually goes out right there. And then we'll have the other side of the bushing or the other side of the link in on that side right underneath the frame as close this way as possible. That way we'll come right past the pumpkin straight this way and then we'll probably uh, angle it in just a hair and then back straight this way all the way in once we get it in there and get it bent just right. But that's the plan for the pan hard bar. The reason I want to do that is the longer that bar is, the less movement up and down it'll have, which means it's not going to be pulling this tire in and out as much. So that's why I want to make that bar as long as possible to make sure that we don't have as much, what do you call it, lateral movement. And then that way it's not having a rub on the fender, come in, rub on the fender, come back out, all that kind of stuff. All right, I want to touch on that just a little bit more. I'm going to use my little dry erase board here in the truck because uh, I didn't finish the video. Well, I finished the video. You'll see. Anyway, so let's say you've got the bed of the truck, outer edge of the bed. Now, we're looking at it from the back of the truck, and you've got the outer edge of the truck, outer edge of the truck right here, right? You've got your, your tires and your tires. And then you've got an axle that goes across. With that pan hard bar, it's going to connect at one end. And then it's going to come over here and connect to that frame that's in there. Okay? Everything has a circle. This bar right here has a movement that will complete a complete circle if allowed. So when it moves up, with the with the wheels moving up it's going to move in this direction so the wheel when it moves up it's going to get pulled in that direction so this wheel and this wheel if your fender when it goes to lay out okay when it lays out it's going to go all the way up like this and it's going to follow that arc if your fender is too close at the top when you lay out your tire is going to go right into that fender Okay, so that's something you got to to uh, pay attention to is that the more movement, the further it goes up, the further over it's going to go. Same thing on lift. It's going to go this way. But on lift, there's a little bit less to worry about about rubbing fenders except for the fact that it's going to end up looking like your whole truck is bent if you're way up in the air and it's pulled off to one side. So you don't want to do that. That's why you want to have little movement, especially with a, a two link. Now there are, uh, uh, I'm going to, might sound weird, but, uh, I think they're called bar bung ends. And what these do is you have your bush, your, uh, your link end, and then it's got this piece that goes through it like this. Okay. And what that does is that holds the bolt. Okay, the bolt goes through from the top you've got your bar 
and then you've got your bar bung in and then it's got this bolt that goes through now what this bolt can do is it can swivel when this swivels it can it can swivel in different directions what that's going to do is that's going to also help that end that i said is going to be twisting the bar well it's got an internal piece that twists instead of the link end so you can look those up on thorbros.com they have he has everything on there that you would need to be able to do that you can put a stationary mount at one end on the frame and then put a bar bung on the other end and that would allow it to flex without the bar having to twist the less twisting you have the better because then you're not going to break your welds you're not going to bend your bar uh, you're not going to risk failure is what that's going to end up becoming but I just I wanted to touch a little bit on that about how your axle is going to move as it's going through its stroke. So in essence, when you're halfway at the halfway point, at full movement, if it's moving an inch to one side and then down to center and an inch back in the other direction, if you take it and move it a half an inch over farther when you set it, it's only going to be a half an inch off of center at the top and a half an inch off center at the bottom and a half an inch off at center. You see what I'm saying? Because you've got your center point here and if you set it a half an inch to this way, when it goes up, it's gonna hit center and then over a half an inch. Same thing on the way down. It's gonna hit center and then over a half an inch. That way you're using up that whole one inch from center and then it's gonna it, it, it won't look like much when it's traveling and going down a road. It's, you know, and then when you go to lay it out, it's going to lay out in a lot nicer way. If you have a minimal clearance on the inside of your fenders, you're going to rub the hell out of that fender. You're going to ruin your tire. You're going to ruin your rim. You're going to ruin the inside of the fender when you're trying to lay out and go skating down the street. It's just things you got to think about when you're setting up these suspensions. So I just want to add that in there. And uh, we'll continue on with our regularly scheduled program. So, all right, most, enough talking with this crap. I'm just, like I said, I'm hurting. I don't know if we're even going to get to this, but I wanted to play with this idea a little bit. I know I'm supposed to be doing cross members and all that, but there ain't no way. I'm having trouble just sitting on this chair right now, and it hurts. I even tried to start drinking. See, look. And I, I just, I'm feeling sick to my stomach. I don't even want to drink. It's probably just going to be an all day sit inside and movie kind of day. Yeah. I know I always say I'm sorry, but I really am. I'll have to double up on this crap next week. I just need to relax my back and uh, prepare to be able to get something done next week. It's also hard driving and allowing the, that muscle to uh, do what it's supposed to to relax it's hard to relax all right i talked enough if we get anything else done then we'll be back on here if not peace out freaks we got to do some work on this soon give me uh give me some time people we'll get it done yeah somebody's trying to get away from me oh comment I don't know what else to say. Later, guys.